I've recently been asked by one of my subscribers if I could do something on text effects. I previously avoided effects with the exception of a few in my recent episodes, mainly because there are so many of them. However, since I've been asked, in this series I'll explore some of the visual effects available in the free version of HitFilm. Note that if you are working with HitFilm, most of the behaviours and many of the effects are unavailable without being watermarked. They are only available when using HitFilm Creator or HitFilm Pro. You should note also that effects specifically designed for text events can be found in the Behaviours category, not the Effects category. It's also worth noting that some of the available effects can only be applied to layers. This means that they have to be applied to layers in a composite shot. In this tutorial I'll be looking at some of the effects that can be used on text strings. I'll make a start with the text effect that is quite simple to create. This is where an image or video is made to play inside text. There are two effects that can be used to achieve this effect. Here's an example using the Invert Alpha effect. You can see that the masking breaks down a little on parts of the text edges, so this method may not be desirable. For completeness though, I'll use this effect first, then I'll demonstrate the other, more suitable effect later. I'll first create some text in a composite shot. For best effect, the font needs to be heavy, as the background image or video will show within the typeface. I'll use AR Julian. I've already imported a suitable video file, which I'll drop into the composite shot underneath the text layer. As you can see, the video needs scaling up to full HD. Now to add the effect. This needs to be added to the text layer and the effect I'll be adding is the invert alpha effect. Just to explain what this effect does. Normally a text layer has a transparent background. This is needed so that any image beneath the text layer in the track structure will show through. The text itself is opaque, so it will be superimposed onto the image layer. Adding the invert alpha effect does exactly that. It inverts the alpha channel so that the background becomes opaque and the text becomes transparent. The result is that the background image or video is displayed within the text. Now let's use an image instead of a video.
As before, part of the image is displayed within the text. If you don't want that particular part of the image, simply use the on-screen control to move the image. Now that's OK, providing the text will remain static. What if you want to move it? If you do, you've lost the relationship as the image remains static. What you need to do is to parent the image layer to the text layer. Now when I move the text, the image follows. Using the set matte effect produces a better result than the invert alpha effect. This is the same sequence as before, but with this effect used instead of the invert alpha effect. Now back to the invert alpha scenario. You'll notice that currently the background is black. If you put a background image at the bottom, it won't show through because the background of the text is opaque, not transparent. To make this image show through as a background, we need to rearrange the layers and use the set matte effect on a different layer. First, I'll move the image that I want to appear in the text to the top. I'll call this the in-text image. Next, I'll remove the invert alpha effect from the text layer. Now I'll add the set matte effect to the sunset image. One more setting to change. I'll open up the set matte effect entry and change the source layer option to point to the text layer. As I mentioned previously, if I want the in-text image to follow any movement of the text, it needs parenting to the text layer. This is a good one, as it can be animated to produce interesting types of intros and outros. I'll be using the lower third template I created in episode 15, and I've included a download link for this in the details. Refer to episode 7, part 1, for details on how to install this template. I've loaded this template, but I've chosen to edit it rather than import. Now I need to move the lower third into position and apply the heat distortion effect. I could combine the three layers into an embedded composite shot, as I described in episode 14. If I do that though, I wouldn't be able to save it as a template. It's not possible to save an embedded composite shot as a template. I'm going to use a different method which will allow me to save it as a template. I'll use a point layer to allow the three layers to be moved into position. 
I explained this in episode 15. Refer to this episode for details. To apply the heat distortion effect to all three layers, I'm going to use a grade layer. I've not dealt with grade layers before, and it's a subject that deserves a tutorial on its own. For this reason, I won't go into detail here. For now, I'll just say that I'll add a grade layer at the top of the track list and add the heat distortion effect to this layer. Grade layers affect the tracks underneath, so the heat distortion effect will be applied to the layers on these tracks. I can then save the complete composite shot as a template. To start off, I'll add a point layer and parent the three layers to it. I can now move the lower third into position. Now I'll add a grade layer. This should automatically add to the top of the track list, but if it doesn't, move it to the top. I'll now add the heat distortion effect to this layer. You can now see how the heat distortion effect is applied to the three layers by the grade layer. If I play the timeline, you'll see the result with the effects parameters at their default values. Now for the intro animation. There are many ways of doing this using different parameters of the effect, but for this tutorial I'm just going to animate the scale, diffusion bias and the diffusion strength. At the start I want the scale to be such that the lower third almost disappears. I want the lower third to be as invisible as I can make it. That means adjusting the diffusion bias and the diffusion strength to achieve that. I'll now assume an intro duration of 2 seconds. At the 2 second mark I want the lower third to be fully visible, with no distortion. You may want to experiment with the parameters to achieve the effect you want. The outro is achieved by reversing the sequence of keyframes at the end of the composite shot. I explained how to do this in episode 15. The polar warp effect warps the affected layer into a circular shape. This is a simple way to create a circular path for a text string. I'll start as usual with a new composite shot. Now a new text layer.
I'll now apply the polar warp effect. Because we're applying the effect to a text layer, there are only four of the parameters that need adjusting. The end radius will adjust the diameter of the text path, so I'll set this to 750. I don't want any reflection, so I'll make sure that the wrap X and wrap Y parameters are set to null. The final parameter which I'll use for the animation is the rotation parameter. With the playhead at the start of the timeline, I'll adjust the rotation parameter so that the start of the text is at the top. You don't have to do this of course. You can make the start of the text occur anywhere on the circle. Now for the animation. I've described how to animate a parameter in a few of my tutorials, so I won't describe it here. I will though do it slowly, so that those of you who are unsure can follow it easily. I'll now play the animation. If you want the text to rotate anticlockwise, simply negate the rotation value at the end keyframe. One more thing, if you set the wrap parameters to reflect and adjust the start and end radius parameters, you can get some interesting results. Now let's look at some of the other parameters for this effect. The rotation parameter, as you've already seen, sets the orientation of the layer, in this case the text, on the warp circle. As usual, the degrees value is accompanied by a modifying value. The range parameter determines how far the layer wraps around the warp circle. The center entry has two parameters. The position parameter has two coordinates, x and y. These determine the exact position of the spherical warp circle center.
The default values of zero place the center in the center of the frame. The second parameter labeled use layer allows you to use the position data from another layer to determine the center. The start radius parameter determines the distance from the center point where the image warping starts. In this particular scenario, I need minimum warping of the text, so it should be set to zero. The end radius parameter determines the overall diameter of the warp circle. Wrap X and Wrap Y parameters allow either a copy or a reflection of the layer to be displayed in the area outside the warp sphere. They each have three options. In this scenario I've chosen the Disable option, which is No. Finally, the Reverse checkbox, when checked, will stretch and distort the contents of the warp circle so that the entire frame is filled. As you can see, in this scenario, enabling this parameter serves no useful purpose. In this tutorial, I've shown how some effects available in the free version of HitFilm can be used on text layers to create interesting results. In further parts in this series, I'll explore more of these effects, as well as other interesting ones that can be applied to video events or images. As I mentioned in my introduction, describing each of the many effects available would be a mammoth task, so I'll be limiting the effects covered to the ones I think would be most useful. Join me next time when, amongst other things, I'll be demonstrating chroma keying, sometimes called green screening. Until then, bye for now.